That's that TKO right in your dome. Uh, I am, of course, uh, uh, <laughs> sort of um, backed up today on this episode of of our podcast today about worst fighting games because I've I've been diving deep in the last couple of months. We have we have Maximilian, we have Justin Wong, and all three of us I think have dipped into our fair share of fighting game dreck over the last couple of years. Uh, Justin's kind of new to the area, I think, on his channel. You've been you dip into some bad shit every so often, right? Yeah, I think I do. Uh, for the most part, people recommend games and everything, and then obviously you gave us like a, a good list of to look for uh, for bad fighting games. But when I was looking through a list, I'm like, damn, you know, surprisingly. He didn't put the one that I played recently, Dino Rex, which I think is a horrible fighting game. Um, y- you know, it's terrible. And I have a that's complaint. Why... I'm looking at this list and I don't see Battle Arena Toshinden. Well, that's, oh, no, no, that's no, no, be- no, no, no. <laughs> that's because you guys have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> those, those are both very interesting fighting games that do something different at the time of their release. That's all I'm saying. But no, if if anyone wants to just just go in on anything, feel free to do it. But uh, let's just start uh, today this this monumentous podcast because the worst characters video that we did a few weeks back did so well. Everyone was so cordial in the comments, and everyone agreed that Xanadu and Fang are the worst fighting <laughs> games. No one no one uh, defended them. Damn, it's but crazy to see the FGC come together on this monumentous occasion. It's nice. It, it brought a tear to my eye. It was unfortunate because I did see some comments of like, yeah, Ru- Rufus was is also a bad character. I'm like, come on, man. I know, I know, I know you guys didn't like Rufus, but I didn't, I didn't expect everyone else to hate Rufus as well, too. There were a few Rufus defenders, defenders of the poundage. Right. Of Rufus, his circumference. Everyone loves the circumference. Yeah, def- defender of Ken's rival, eternal rival. It's not Eternal. Ryu. It's Rufus. <laughs> I bl- okay. I believe the mid two thousands term is the Rufus defense force. <laughs> the Rufus like, defense force. Ryu gets Sagat. Ken gets Rufus. <laughs> hey, so don't sleep on Rufus, bro. He got a dive kick. He can. How, how you can't tell me that a big man doing changing his mid action in mid air is not cool. I I don't want to sleep on him. I don't want to sleep with him. I don't want to sleep anywhere near him. No sleeping near Rufus. I don't trust him. That's the type of guy Rufus is. Um, I will say his girlfriend. What's his girlfriend's name? Like candy or or like buttercup yeah, it's, or it's butterscotch? Kinda, it's, it's like a candy butterscotch. I think. Wow. <laughs> it's, hey, it, butterscotch, get <laughs> over here. It's definitely like a like a candy, something candy related for sure. I mean, but like if Rufus had like its own like Yelp reviews for restaurants, you would trust him, right? You would Max, trust him. Max, I'm getting worried that Justin is somehow tricking us into doing a Rufus cast. It's really not working. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start with bad fighting games. Let's just start with stuff that is non functional let's get it out of the way well i think, I think Any, before before we jump into the list yeah what's the mm-hmm. first bad fighting game that you guys actually remember because as kids it's kind of hard to identify what's bad like because you just consume uh so the first like moment and i have a historic like video on my channel that that said so i don't even really go into mine very much but i'm curious for you guys like when was the first time you played a fighting game you're like this is trash oh I, that's I, free that I is, have what, my is, answer, what is yours but, what is yours but, justin yeah, I want to know. So free. I went to Toys R Us. You know how when you go to Toys R Us, you have to get those little slippets, right? Those little slippets, and then you just mm-hmm. go take it to the cash register. They give you the game. So this game was fifty nine ninety nine on the SNES, and I was a kid, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm such a fan!" Because when you're a kid at this age, you love basketball. And who who, who was a, oh. a, a fighting game character in basketball? Oh, sh- Shaq Fu. Sh- 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 exactly. Oh. So that one. Yes, that one triggered me so hard, um, and it, it it was crazy because Matt also put me in a cameo to play that game. Forced and, you, right? And I hated the game so much. And as a kid, I, I definitely hated the game because I could, I was like, "You, this is impossible. Like, I can't beat this game as a kid. None of the special moves are coming out. Like, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever." So, like, the whole game was just complete trash. I think nowadays Shaq Fu is not nearly as bad as it was back then. Back then, I agree. There's something about it hit the it hit the right time at the right place to be the worst. 
it, 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 it just because of the celebrity involvement and how Michael Jordan had like his bad game, not a fighting game, but Michael Jordan chaos in the windy city also reviewed very poorly. And everyone just kind of started dumping on these games that were like built around celebrities, but Shaq Fu could have worked if it wasn't made by a developer that never made a fighting game and worked on cinematic platformers. Because it, it was a 1v1 fighting game, right? I've never actually yeah. played Shaq Fu. Because it was a 1v1 fighting game. I only question that because like the later versions when they for some reason resurrected that shit became like a beat em up, right? Yep. I, I don't remember the Kickstarter or whatever promises. I don't know why you would promise such a thing. Like let's let's go back and make Shaq Fu. But yeah, they the just changed it to was a made. <laughs> 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 the, your fate is sealed. <laughs> They just turn it into a brawler. I think it was like just a really like one sentence thing. It's like, hey, fighting games are old and blase. Nobody plays those anymore. People play brawlers in like 2014. And I would lobby to say that Shaq Fu 2 is a worse brawler than the original Shaq Fu is a worst fighting game. Really? Oh, that's, yeah, that's so, I that's, hate. really? That's so, mm, it's that that's bad. a big statement. It's because Maximilian, Justin, a, a bad brawler goes on forever with levels that never end and the most repetitive gameplay. Just by its structure, a fighting game is like, mm, one, one, one 60 second rounds, that's it. Then you're yep. done. Shaq Fu goes on and on. And it makes sure, like, hey, can we get some homophobia jokes in here? That's great. Oh, That's God. topical. <laughs> oh, God. Like, very South Park, like, early South Park humor in, like, a 20, uh, 2017. That game didn't even release that long ago. And plus, the uh, Kickstarter was, like, a, a shit show. Yeah. Like, a lot of things went wrong with it. So, it just has, like, even even worse stigma in my in my mind. And when I played it, I was just like, this is a worst game of the year contender. When Damn. I when I played Shaq Fu the original and forced Mr. Justin Wong to also play Shaq Fu the original, it's like, yeah, this is bad. I'm not going to deny that. But uh, like, there is a sort of charm. The sprite work is nice. It has a nice mood. Some character designs are okay. It is a bad fighting game, but it's like, it's nowhere near the worst for me. You know what it is? I think it's because... Trying to perform the special moves on an SNES pad. Oh, dude. You know, that might be the, the one mm. that caused it. Like me playing on a joystick, I was able to do the moves a lot more. Obviously, I got better at fighting games. But just like, man, the, the, the SNES pad on Shaq Fu trying to perform these these inputs and trying to... Because these special moves felt like Street Fighter 1. It felt like mm. you had to do it so precise. Uh, negative edge as well, too, in order for these special moves to come out. I get a lot of people that go super defense force on the SNES pad when it comes for when it comes to the D-pad itself and I just cannot sympathize man like no. even even in other games where you have to do rolling motions of any kind I'm like this shit sucks I do not like this I think it's just the grip of the Super Nintendo pad sometimes it throws me off especially when you go back to it I had never had a problem with the D-pad though LNR's uh, that that kind of depends that those are always kind of clunky but um in terms of me for the first fighting game that I played where I, it wasn't Shaq Fu, I, yeah, there's Shaq Fu's too good. Um, <laughs> mine is power moves on the Super Nintendo. Um, and power moves is made by a developer that made like maybe two games ever. And power moves is just a bad street fighter. Now, you know how um, in Fatal Fury, the line, the line system, right? This was kind of that, but it gave you free movement where you can just, the characters just walked almost like they're in a beat em up but you had a tiny little sliver of the stage to do so. So it wasn't like hopping between lines, it was just free movement. Matt, and what the hell is this cover art on power moves? <laughs> so it's the power moves, Bruce, please get this in here. It's just a dude, what is he doing, Max? He's like slugging the hell out of a guy, but it looks so 90s done by somebody who has no idea what they're yeah. doing like it is and it's called deadly moves on the genesis apparently it's like a little yeah. bit different oh wow. and i think in japan it's called death dance which is a much better name i think it's called death dance wow yeah, um, yeah, yeah but okay. this was like a slow ass game where there was always slow not slow not like slow down due to technical reasons but for like stylistic reasons you would throw 
like a, a character had like a boomerang and they would throw it and they'd hit hit their opponent then it would stop like it would just like frame stop for like a second and then it would hit him again they'd be like oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm watching a video, and like every time, the, like a character does a special move or gets hit, literally the game just pauses for like, yeah. like literally like a few frames. So that's actually kind of ham. The one neat thing about it is, did it have it like a little of a little bit of an RPG system where your character leveled up as you fought, and I think you had passwords so you could keep going back and leveling up, something like that. It was just like I think it was seven fighters or something very paltry uh selection the the last boss was cool it, he looked like straight out of fatal fury he was a guy with like a white like wife beater t-shirt and like suspenders and like slacks he looked like like an snk character and his name was ranker <laughs> and you, you fought gotta... him in like a big arena like a like end of the game style arena like the flash bulbs giant crowd it's a lot like tzok stage in uh garo and I just thought that was that's a cool boss. Um, but all the characters are really lame. They're all Street Fighter knockoffs, like down to like the um, the woman character is just a an unabashed uh, Chun Li uh, ripoff. But I I saved up all my money to buy a used copy of this because um, it was just a fighting game that was available at the time, and I couldn't afford that much. So I just played this, and I I just kept playing it. I had no other option for the, for the longest time except for like the occasional rentals. So, uh, power moves was mine. Maximilian, what is yours? Uh, it's in kind of a similar vein to this, where it was like, oh, this just looks really cool. And I I can't remember if Killer Instinct was already out yet. I think it might not have been. But yeah, bought it as a used copy. I think it came packed in with a controller and that if that wasn't warning enough that they couldn't get rid of this horrible cartridge, then I don't know what the hell I was. I was like, I'm getting a deal. 15 bucks for a controller and a game. And this guy's like, yeah, you better buy it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, mine's Rise of the Robots on Super Nintendo. And I made a whole ass video about it. And yeah, long story short, it just it's just awful it, it it the the animations are terrible it's like some care there's a cool looking character on the box art and that mm -hmm. is about it but it's just like a really bad looking ki with no mechanics like i think it's got special moves that you sort of do sort of but ultimately the way you play the whole game is just spam light kick with the main character and you win and that's like yeah. it. It's like it, 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 if you try to play it any other way, the game just input reads the hell out of you. And that's that's all it does. And then you fight like power loaders and all these other weird, funky robots and stuff that I've mostly forgotten what they look like. It's it was so, a sad day for me to go home with that. I, <laughs> a Rise of the Robots is a big rental for me, too. I like the aesthetic of it, like all these cool, slick CG robots. OK. Decent music, okay, but then you, you play it, and like, yeah, every character has one. If they're fancy, if they're a technical character, they might have two special moves. Yeah, um, yeah, and actually playing it, it's it's not great. It plays Amiga, like a fat ass. <laughs> it plays like like slapping chunks. Yes. Um. So it, so you're saying that all three of our games that we say like this is our first encounter of bad fighting they're all games. SNES they're games. All, yeah they're all from SNES. How weird. <laughs> oh, SNES I mean, like, a lot of fighting game ripoffs yeah, that, like you know Street Fighter and That does make sense because this is the era of like I think for all of our games post Mortal Kombat and post Street Fighter where the boom mm -hmm. happened and the first boom yeah. was Street Fighter 2 and then the second boom was like digitized characters in Mortal Kombat and everyone mm -hmm. tried to jump on that shit because those games were kind of easier to make like this was like early fighting games where it's just like, oh, nobody knows what they're actually doing. So just throw shit in, give them a couple special moves, copy Street Fighter, you know, have it going at it. So no uh, balance whatsoever. Yeah. No, there's no time for balance. What are you talking <laughs> about? Uh, not not when we can just be dressing up uh, assholes in front of a blue screen and just, yeah, just just do it. So I never played at the time Pit Fighter and Pit Fighter in the arcade predated Mortal Kombat. So it's like, you know, be be easy on it. I think it might have even predated um, Street Fighter 2. I think Pit Fighter might have been 1990. I didn't. I don't have that in front of me you right are now. Right. It is. It is 1990. Uh, it Ooh. does. I think it either predates or is like right around Street Fighter 2. Like, yeah, pretty close yeah. to it. But yeah, this is so, essentially just Mortal Kombat. 
It is, and the arcade version I know is better, but a lot of people have told me, come up to me, on the street. <laughs> on the just street. That the, the console version, specifically the Super Nintendo version, is like the worst. It's like, it's one of those conversions where, yeah, we couldn't convert everything, so everything is so stripped down that it's barely a game anymore. Oh, um, I see. Oh. I see what this is. This is more like uh, like a wrestling game, like one of those old Midway WWF games type of thing. It's like it close even, to it. It doesn't even seem more like basic. a Yeah, it's it's kind of like like you're playing those like beat em up side scroller games, but you they just made it into a fighting game. Yeah, like a double only, dragon. There's only three selectable characters, but it's just one on one matches. You don't go through a stage. You just fight a guy in an arena, and then there's a lot of bonus objectives like getting money and shit. You just got to get that paper. You, when you're a pit fighter, it's all about you're the paper fighter. And I've never played the Super Nintendo version, but like eventually I will have to. But a lot of people are like, this is no, this is the worst. And I'm always like, ha you have to give it a little bit of slack when it even predates Street Fighter 2, you know, but uh, but that. Yeah, but the arcade version looked kind of nice though compared to the SNES one. It actually looks like because obviously the characters are bigger, uh, the animations are just much more just like it, just yeah. more fluid in it, general. The SNES version looks like one color upgrade over a Game Boy game. Yeah. yeah. Um. Any others in this list you guys want to jump around to? What 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 strikes your fancy? Well, um, uh, I think I definitely played, if we're looking at the top of this stuff, of the just trash pile, right? We have a couple piles in this list, which is like <laughs> the disappointing pile, the just trash pile, the barf pile. Um, <laughs> I played Ultimate Battle 22, which I think was a PlayStation, either a PS1 Play game? P yeah, PS1. Yeah, PS1. I, I played that for the, the Dragon Ball Legacy, and yeah, that shit was rough, dude. But I, I don't think it... I remember it being just as bad as that Dragon Ball GT game on PS1. Which Final is the, Bout? Yeah, the one that everyone talked about that has Super Baby at the very end. Yeah, that game was sick. That game was sick, he says. Yeah, <laughs> but you know why? Be, be, see, the thing is, if you are a Dragon Ball lover, it doesn't matter how bad the Dragon Ball game it is. You will, you will ride and matter, die. Though. No, you will ride and <laughs> die with Dragon Ball if you're a Dragon Ball fan. There wasn't many I, options. I'm a, I'm a Dragon Ball fan. Like I don't even think this game came out for like America, like USA copy. It was just it, like a it, Japanese it copy, right? It, yeah. it eventually did. Like when Dragon oh, okay. Ball hit. Uh, like in the 2000s, they re-released it on the PS1, like to take to take advantage of the new fans. But its initial release, I don't think, came came uh, outside of Japan. Nah, this 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 game is sick. I don't know what you're talking about. No, final final <laughs> bout final bout is bad. It's not like terrible. At least everyone's 3D and you know early 3D. So you're kind of like that's fine. But like Max said, Ultimate Battle is like 3D-ish stages. But they're these really stiff, shitty sprites yeah. Yeah. that feel really terrible to move around. The one thing I'll give it is that I think it has like a lot of tag. Like it's it's two v two or three v three, or there's that option at least. I think there was one of those I, elements. Yeah, yeah. And the last time I played that, I remember it being. I remember not having a good time at all. And final bout's bad, but like I kind of prefer final bout at least because it has a bunch. Like its roster is pretty crazy. And at the time, Dragon Ball was out like in Canada, and I could see Dragon Ball like regularly. GT had this crazy ass roster of characters I'd never even heard of before because I hadn't seen that, especially movie characters. Like what? Like Max said, Super Baby. I was like, what's a Super Baby? I don't oh, you know. Oh, you're gonna find that's, out. <laughs> that's the well. That's from GT, which is not part of the story. It's kind of like you know they they kind of wipe that that. No, GT out. is part of the story. Don't you tell me that. <laughs> You know, so technically Super Saiyan 4s and babies don't exist. Uh, but, you know, speak if, if I had to choose a very bad Dragon Ball fighting game, uh, th this one is just literally called Dragon Ball Z for the arcade. Have you ever seen that one? Um, it's just I, called I, Dragon I'm, Ball Z Arca Arcade. I might have. I think I, I might have played it. I'm looking at it right now and definitely not. Uh, no. Is it how old is it? Is it like an old 2D game or is it a 3D game? It's an old 2D game. Like literally, it's called Dragon Dragon Space Ball Space Z, and then arcade. Oh, I think I see it. It's got like eight characters. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oof. All right. So so this game I actually played at, in a tournament for. This is when I was doing the hundred <laughs> online tournaments and trying to win hundred right. online tournaments. And they had this game as a tournament, and I was like, "Bro, what is this game? This looks like it was like moving on like like on a web browser type of fighting game." So this this was to me the worst Dragon Ball fighting game I have ever played because the movements were super slow. It looked like it was like on some MS Paint type of like drawing in general, and like everything was moving literally like probably like five five frames per per second type of thing. That's that's generous five frames per second. It's it's uh, pretty bad. <laughs> Taiketsu DBZ Taiketsu, which I did a video on a little while ago, that was like. They're the Dragon Ball characters are rendered so they look like they're from like Super Nintendo yeah. KI. And the way that game works is that everyone plays a little bit like Mortal Kombat, where everyone has a sweep, like an uppercut style move, and that's it. There's no yeah. base special moves that you can do, like at all, until you just like oh, hold two buttons and power up, right? So once you powered up one level, everyone can do a basic projectile. They're all the same, and they act the exact same. Then you level up to power two, you can do one super move, and that's it. And then level three, you do one other super move. And that's, that's your move set. So everyone is identical. There is no difference between Nappa versus uh, Gohan. And when I, <laughs> when I played that not too long ago, it was like, this this might be the worst. It just might be the worst. But the game weirdly has a bunch of special features and unlockables. Like there's dip switches that you unlock that just let you do a bunch of shit. Like, oh, I have infinite uh key. Um we're we're tiny. We have slow motion combat. And there's a bunch of characters you can unlock. You can unlock half more than the roster. Like you start off with seven characters, you can unlock eight of them. I'm like, there's content here. I mean, yeah, the base game is terrible, but Taiketsu, you just look at it and that's a barf. That's a barf pile. No, I no, I was no. I was like I was agreeing with you for the most part. I'm scrolling through a video right now and I saw that they have my favorite character of all time in there, Great Saiyaman, and I'm like, "Oh, this is this is a great game now." So that's the thing. Characters will always make games for people no matter how shitty the game is. It doesn't yep, I, matter. I, yeah, I saw Great Saiyan Man and I'm like, oh, he's playable? Nah, don't say no more. Okay, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm against you, Justin, but I'm also with you because while Great Saiyan Man is like, you know, he's I, I like him. If they had Super Saiyan 4 in there, I'd be like, no, this is the greatest game of all time because I, <laughs> I love Super Saiyan 4. Nowadays, like I grew older and wiser but back in the day, I was like, Super Saiyan 4 is so terrible. Oh, it's so lame. But then when I see what current Dragon Ball like transformations and levels are, where it's like, I have blue hair. It's tame and cool. Hey. Super Saiyan 4 is awesome. Yeah. Super Saiyan 4 is awesome with the whole tail thing. I mean, you got, got the fur going on. Sexy. But, that was the one they added you, in, in towards the end to Dragon Ball Fighters. That was like the crazy level 5 kill you in one hit. Super Saiyan oh, 4. Yeah. Goku, that's right? uh, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan for, 4 for Gogeta. Go Gogeta. Thank you. Okay, sorry. That's yeah. different. Yeah, and like I think baby baby Goku turns turns into him as well during oh, the super. Oh, GT Goku is uh the rat. Yeah. That's what they call him in the game. <laughs> the He's rat. called the rat. G <laughs> okay, so GT Goku got hit by a curse from a wish from a Dragon Ball to make his adult size to turn into the younger size. So that is the story of GT Goku, and that's why Goku is that small. That's why he's a rat. Yeah. Look at this guy. He's all up on his lore and shit. I, I'm about the lore. You know what I mean? I told you, I'm a Dragon Ball. You know, I die with Dra I ride with Dragon Ball and I die with Dragon Ball. I only know yeah. Dragon Ball relative to Dragon Ball fighters. <laughs> Justin's yeah. like, uh, fun fact about me, I actually own the real life Dragon Balls and I can do whatever I want with them. I'm just biding my time. Imagine. I, I'm trying to get three wishes. I'm trying to make it a, a dragon where it's that one wish to turn it to three wishes. I think we need to ad address the uh, the the just trash at the top of this list, which is uh, yeah. Matt's uh, pretty much branded game now, which is Criticom. It's a part of his branding in it, some way. I don't want it to be. It this so okay. Th this game actually. <laughs> you played this so too. You, you made me play it, right? And I deeply regret it. But I didn't make you. I suggested you it do. Came across <laughs> as a 3D version and worse playing Rise of the Robots, which I didn't think could be possible. It's it's like that. It's it's like let's look at early Virtual Fighter, like early early Virtual Fighter, and let's uh, belt a game out in six months. 
To the team's defense, they had to scrap a previous game and they wanted to make the PlayStation 1 launch. So they're like, we have to just make something in six months. Yeah. And and that's the result is, is Criticom. It's like nothing. I have not played something yet in a 3D setting in a fighting game that plays as worse as Criticom. It's just everything just feels so sluggish. It feels like take Dark Souls 1, uh, sorry, Demon Souls 1 on the ps3 and try to adapt that into a fighting game with how like bad the rolling is and you you know like the the mechanics that are meant to slow you down and to make the game hard let's adapt that into a fighting game yeah you truly don't understand until you actually play it like it yeah yeah. it is actually uh actual butt trash of a game that is shocking that it it's the perfect example of like all those fighting games at the time where devs are like how hard can that be and then mm-hmm. you actually learn no making a fighting game is actually pretty tough you know all things considered and they just got a ton of games like this like yeah. justin you're you're all like me dino rex hate it like you're gonna dino rex will be your marvel too compared no, to if you no, yes no. No, oh, you play. Sorry. I sorry. challenge, Mister. I, Ju- I challenge, Mister. <laughs> Justin Wong. He cannot resist the negative allure of Criticom if he plays it. That'll be his least favorite fighting game if he, if he actually goes through with it. I mean, okay, so th- this is actually this game, this video, uh, the one that you made a review for Criticom. This is probably the video that started our conversations with each other. Because it, you could, yeah, because so. yes, yes, because you talked about how this is the worst fighting game of all time, and I was like, how can there be a worse fighting game than Shaq Fu, right? <laughs> so, so I, you know, I watched it, I, I laughed so hard because you just can't, you picked this character and just did the little twirly sidestep the whole time. It was working, I, right? And then I downloaded the game on no DC and I tried. I'm like, man, this game actually is trash. Like it, it's very, very bad. I, 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 I do agree with you that it is terrible. But have you gone really in? Like, have you tried to like beat the arcade ladder? Did you just play like a, ra- a match or two? I couldn't. I I, I spent <laughs> at least like thirty minutes, and I'm like, this is so boring. <laughs> like, it didn't and have. It was not the fun. <laughs> that's the problem. Is that it's it, it has like nothing special to it. You know, like it, it just is the most basic of. You have like a move or two, similar to Rise of the Robots, where yeah, it, it's like watching a bad movie, but not a bad movie that oh, it's so bad, it's good. No, it's just terribly boring and uninteresting, where you don't yeah. want to watch it anymore. But the developers' later games, Dark Rift on the N64 and Cardinal Sin, those are so bad that they're good. Like, those have things or characters or mechanics, especially Cardinal Sin. Cardinal Sin has, like, a, a lot of weird characters and mechanics and has more of a, a free roam feel. It has, like, dynamic, dynamic 3D stages that have, like, hazards and shit. So there's stuff there, but Criticom, there's no stuff there. No stuff. Does anyone know what Criticom even means? Uh, critical Hits. Critical communication. <laughs> so critical combat. Wow. They just they're just like we can just mash two words together. <laughs> it's a fusion. So yeah. <laughs> it's a fusion. We're brilliant. But, yeah. But the coolest thing about this game is probably the character select screen. I like the character select screen a lot. When it's I first saw the character Yeah, when I saw the character select screen, I'm like, oh this game can't be that bad. It has a pretty pretty neat character select screen. It looks kind of cool. And then yeah, I mean I'm it was history ever since then i just didn't want to play that game ever (laughs) after 30 minutes i'm like i can't play this game it's driving me insane this was a game that had that really exhausting opening cutscene setting up for its like world characters and laura has this huge like multi-minute cinematic to bring you to the world of criticom and it's all welcome to the world of criticom (laughs) three If if it Criticom got to three, I I even think I read something like Criticom sold okay, okay because it was a PlayStation North America uh, launch title, I believe, or like really really close to it. Um, as, aside from that, because I want to actually stop talking about Criticom, <laughs> I see, I see someone in the document is looking at Kabuki Warriors right now. What does what does anyone think or have anything to say about Kabuki Warriors? Or are you guys not familiar with that I need to see one? if I've played this. The, I, I feel like, no, I haven't played this weird shit. What? So, I, on Xbox? I, yeah, I haven't yeah. played it, but it looks good, though. Like, the movement, it looks fast. It looks like it has combos and everything. So, it just it just looks like it just works well. I mean, so, the characters are kind of random, though. 
it 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 is from the same developer as Bushido Blade. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, for whatever reason, this was a Xbox exclusive made by a Japanese team. So it's probably one of those things where Microsoft said, like, hey, how about we give you a little money to actually put a Japanese game on the Xbox? And Justin's right. It doesn't look too bad, but you play this one. Grunkle Derek over at Stop Skeletons from Fighting did a Is It Really That Bad video like a bunch of years ago? Because uh, Kabuki Warriors has, is one of the lowest rated Xbox games ever made. Um, and you actually play it and it's just a really, t- like, you know, Samurai Showdown Sen, the yeah. 3D one that's on the, it's, it's that, but worse than that. And that's bad. So, but, but these characters have very little personality because they're all yeah, Kabuki theater characters. So there's yeah, not like not a actually new- killing each other. It's like you're in a, pl- a stage play. Yeah. It's just kind of interesting, but and people are just throwing for, money from the. I guess the crowd is throwing money at people, yeah. depending on yeah. how, how well you're doing and everything like that. But just the combat system doesn't look too bad, though. Like at least from like I could see people run this with a tournament, and then people would would laugh and have fun with it. I, I, a Devo, maybe. So we're, since we're on like the, the <laughs> Devo, we're on like the Xbox era. Like I have memories of like Kakuto Chojin and shit the the forbidden first party Microsoft banned game that was taken <laughs> off shelves uh, and I still have a copy but even when I I don't think I've ever actually delved deeply enough into it it just feels like one of those like 3D era Mortal Kombat games in several ways where it's just like yeah the, there's some ideas here but I don't know if any of them are sound or really bad or good so you never have Justin have you played it which one Kakuto Chojin on the Xbox. No, I don't even know. I don't even know how you spell that. Uh, it's, it's got Fakumram on the cover. I swear to God, he does. <laughs> it's re- he's really similar. Um, so I played this one. It, it's it's not great by any measure, um, but it doesn't play like a Mortal Kombat game. It plays more like Tekken, where or, you know that's the closest thing I can think of. Uh, every character has like a bunch of different stances and stuff. And there's quite a lot of moves. The animation's okay. The um, uh, the the move list is pretty extensive. It's not a bad game. There's just not that much about it. It is, and it looks quite nice on the Xbox as well. It's one of those weird games where Microsoft was kind of going in on fighters, exclusive fighters on the Xbox, because I think Tao Feng was yeah. either a little bit before this or a little bit after. Yeah, Tobias so, game was like right around the same time. So they, I think that's where I'm getting the impression from, because Tobias was also doing his like 3D, not Mortal Kombat. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and people do mix these two up, because guess what? The guy on the Tao Feng cover looks like this guy on the Kakuto Chojin cover. Just it's a zoom up on his face. Hold on a second, let me look it up. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna get this on screen for sure too. You are totally right. Oh, dude, I, this <laughs> cover art like Ugh. reeks 1990s uh, like Image Comics cover. Like, it does. Like, like the Pit or something like that. Wet works. Wet works. <laughs> yep. So I think this Kakudo Chojin is better than Tao Feng. It's just it plays more solidly. Um, there's more interesting characters and, and mechanics. Uh, that's just my personal thing they're both not great um but kakuto chojin well Ma- max said it was banned earlier because it had a song it's almost from the same issue that the fire temple had in ocarina of time where it's almost the same the, thing yeah the composers sampled like a a song from like the middle east or something that had some like sort of religious connotations so when groups found out about that like you have to remove the song so the game out. was yeah the game wasn't like it was kind of like soft band and then they re-released it, it i think hard copies back into the wild with the with the song removed and stuff but it's not it's not terrible but at the same time it's it's not very good i i kind of like it it's 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 weird i would suggest you guys if you're ever looking to, to play for something dumb fun it, it is an interesting game but it's it's not amazing by any stretch um on the xbox front and a bit of ps2 i have down here fight club i think we mentioned this before oh, i've seen this game i've seen a copy of this game but i've never actually played it uh I, a fight club on original xbox right in ps2 yeah so the the main deals with it is like you miss the point of fight club the movie it's like you know maybe not have commercialism <laughs> and maybe not have tons of products for people to just buy because it, you know buy it buy it but got to buy it but 
this is just boring. Yeah. And I can see that. all the characters are like Ralph, Steven, and it's just dudes with no shirts on and pants. And you just punch that that's it. Like that's the game. There's kind of an x-ray system where you do certain moves, you can break people's bones. But beyond that, it's just them fighting in, in dark clubs and airports and stuff. And that's the game. They couldn't get the rights to Brad Pitt or Edward Norton. So you're like bad Brit and like Norton did. I'm trying to do an Edward Norton thing. Nedward Ed Morton. Morton. It, it, Morton. Just, it, it, it just looks so slow. And why does like the life bars flicker like that? Like, like it's kind know. of, this, it's kind of buggy. This game looks and feels at least from a visual perspective, like one step below the versus mode and enter the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah. that shit. Or that one Bruce Lee action game on the Xbox that's like kind of janky but weird. I know I what you're that talking about. Mode I, too. I, I know what you're talking about. Well, it's like one of those random ass games on Xbox that was just on a shelf and I never saw, tried yeah. or played it. Damn. Like yeah. there's that Bruce Lee game and then a crouching tiger hidden dragon game by Ubisoft. And you're like, what fucking dimension am I living <laughs> in? It's It was a weird time. For licensed games but but the only props and i know anybody that's familiar with matthew mcmuscles knows what i'm gonna say is that fred durst from limp biscuit is an unlockable character in this game and oh, th that okay. that means something to a small amount of people you know uh, it's crazy because when you <laughs> when you hit somebody with like a critical hit kind of like a ufc type of like a mm -hmm. like a hit like how those games work the screen just turns into blood. Like there's blood dripping on yeah. the cameras, and I thought that was kind of cool. That's yeah. that's like real life. Did, they, did yeah. they get any music rights? Like like doesn't like I was about to say for some reason Fred Durst comes to mind, and it's not like Nookie or something like that. I think of like give me something to break, and that'd be like perfect for the game. I think yeah. I do recall it having licensed tracks. I don't remember if a Limbiska track is in there, but it I it would not surprise me. This is the time where Fred Durst was like. You can have my song, but I have to be in the game because he's in two WWF wrestling games and this game. Oh, God. So he, but, <laughs> the, he, here's the thing. If anyone's like, that's cheesy, you would all do the same. Yeah. If, if someone's like, hey, Max, can you help out in this game? You're like, I got to be in it, though. I got to be in this fighting game. You're like He's in Killer Instinct. His nipple is in there. His, tusk. His nipple's in there. <laughs> he's in He's in Jitsu Squad. He's in tons of shit, you know? So and, J and Justin can be in any fighting game he really wants, you know? I need to fight for my place. I think I'm looking at this <laughs> list, and I got one from the disappointing pile that I can completely agree. Or even in Go early early Yo! Video games, I was, like, looking for games that we just hadn't played. Because that was the point of Yo! Video games, to, so like, revisit some of these titles that I was so focused on competitive stuff that I just didn't play. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, a big one was Onimusha Blade Warriors. And it's like, how bad could it be? I know it's an Onimusha Smash-like, right? Yeah. And we played it, and it, it's the epitome of, like what we were describing for the last couple of games, it's just boring. Oh, yeah. Like, nothing about it is really interesting or captivating or feels good, like, in any way. And we just, like, stopped playing it. It's just like, yeah, this would be fun if there was any fun to be had. I really like the idea, though. I was like, that's cool. Exactly. I'll play that. Like, Mega Man, I think Mega Man Zero is, like, a, yeah. even a hidden character in it. There's, there's some interesting shit to be had. But for some reason, any of the combat just is, like, ugh. Or moving around is, like, ugh. It's uh, just so slow. Yeah. It's so slow and funky. But it's, like, it's got a production value of, like, a, a big-budget Capcom game. It's just a, a weird, sh like, offshoot thing in the same vein that, like, Onimusha had a tactics game, I think, on Game Boy Advance and some shit. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Jeez, a core memory unlocked. Well, not a core memory. It's, like, a ter tertiary memory. I don't even know if I have much else to say about it other than I've experienced Blade Warriors, and, yeah, it just was boring. The yeah. crazy thing about it is that two of your special moves, they just straight up say, Hadouken, Shoryuken. <laughs> Like every character has like a DP and like a some type of fireball, and they in the tutorial they're just like, yeah, it's a Hadoken. We're not even fuck it. Fuck Be it. on that name, yeah. you know. And but like, Justin, if you if you if you're seeing the the same footage, it's like it, it's a Smash style like platform fighter, but you can move, hop into like a foreground or a background plane yep. as well. I think in certain stages and stuff, and that just makes things more awkward. And the, the the way the special moves done are also like kind of clunky. 
I think it's just like, no, just rip off Smash, and it would have probably been a bit better. It, if they if they just copied Smash, it would have been better, because this, I, and I remember what it, the feelings I had when we played this after watching this footage now, because this was like maybe eight years ago. It's a mm -hmm. bad Power Stone. It is a very bad, because you pick up it's like these really, diamond things. Yeah. It's the same shit, like the, the foreground stages interacting with environments, fighting each other, but none of it feels right or good, and it, that's just what Power Stone is. Yeah, that is, it, yeah. Damn, this looks terrible, actually. Because <laughs> there's no, there's no even, there's no like hit animations or hit stuns. It, it just looks like your attacks is just going through them. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because that, that's a good point about how it does play like Power Stone. Because in the regular Onimusha games, when you kill enemies, you're collecting their like souls or whatever to power yourself up. And that is the exact same mechanic as, as Power Stone, essentially. And they, they adapted it here. But it's like, if this actually played exactly like Power Stone, like it's just the Onimusha skins again. That would have been a thousand times better than this unique thing that's just kind of clunky and stuff. And yep. um, having Mega Man characters of all the characters, you know what fits best in Onimusha? Mega Man. <laughs> like, <laughs> why not take uh characters from some old beat 'em ups or Street Fighter characters? Like you know, um, Yoshimitsu is just like that. That's that Yoshimitsu from that age. That's why he's in Soul Calibur. Why can't we have Ryu's descendant or not descendant opposite his yeah. predecessor or, or, or whatever. Like that would have been, that would have been sick. I think it reeks like, of some, um, Inafune horse shit where <laughs> he was attached to a lot of these projects. And I think he was attached pretty deeply to Onimusha. So it's just like, yeah, just throw Mega Man in there. Whatever. Uh, yeah, don't throw Dante. Uh, don't throw Dante in there. Cause that's the other guys doing that. That was the other side of the company. Can we can we please get a Photoshop of a box art of Onimusha uh, Blade Warriors that has a quote from Max on it that says "Smells like Inafune horseshit." <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sorry, old school Mega Man fans. I know too much. Um, any any what's what's our next one? We want to give a call out because I want to do the ones that like you just can't control them. Have you ever played? Uh, so I played this in a mystery fighting game tournament have you ever played mm -hmm. battle construction vehicles nope and i'm looking at it right now hold on a second so, i have so, played so, battle construction <laughs> so it's for ps2 and it's literally your characters are literally construction vehicles you know you could pick a bulldozer a wrecking uh, oh, this game one is with sick. a wrecking ball and everything like that uh but yeah yeah like i would say the hit boxes and the hurt boxes good luck finding them that's all I have to say. Good, <laughs> this good is, luck, load. Th this good luck is, finding them. This is like in the exact same vein as games like Fight Crab, you know? Where it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't look like it's that bad. Because Fight Crab is actually kind of sick when you really just sit down and play it. But, uh -huh. you know, just the, the wackiest, kookiest things that could battle, like, Battle Fridge. You know, like, it's, it's a game in Japan somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but th th this game doesn't really... I don't. I don't. I never played fight crab, but I'm assuming you know you use your claws and attack and stuff with, with yeah. as a crab or something. Yes. Uh, but this, but this game is you just run to each other and then you run away oh. and then you and then you tr and then you just try to hit with a super and then that's the game. It's destruction yeah. derby with life bars. Yes. De deadly dildo duels. Right. <laughs> so like the su the supers are cool and everything. The supers are cool because you know they super exaggerate because it's the game it is. Uh, but in general, you're literally just ramming against each other until you get your meter and then you do your super yeah so the the reason why this game gets a pass for me is because it did get localized for europe but because all the characters are japanese construction workers all of the voiceovers or the cut-ins when supers happen they're all like i'm takeshi kondo aren't i <laughs> and yeah and it's just like it's tuesday in it and like they're just performing all these crazy over-the-top supers and like if it was just like regular North American English, or even when you're playing it in Japanese, you're playing in Japanese is going to seem normal to you. But when it's like everyone's British, mm, oh, that's a chef's kiss. Y yeah, the, that's why you the, laugh about it. Yeah, the game is bad, but it's like it's got too much charm where I'm like, eh, it's it's I, I can't hate it, you know, like, uh, but gameplay wise, it's 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 very poor. <laughs> I have a um, I have a question for you, Matthew um uh go ahead max what Williams. the hell happened to def jam icon um so i think we've touched upon this a little bit but it was just like let's do something new let's use our our tech from uh the the fight night games 
and let's not let's make something more in tune with hip hop and not just like a wrestling game and let's do exactly the opposite of what everyone wanted. Let's make um, it not fun. So when you watch or you see footage or you play this, it's like it just it is so boring looking and sterile and just clean. Like it just lacks any sort of character or charm. And you're just kind of hitting each other and holding a button to do like a bigger hit that like makes the uh, stage react. And that was their big thing. No one wants blazing moves. Max, notorious hater of blazing moves. He's not impressed by them. They're not very fun to look at. What he loves to look at, folks is the background uh, buildings yeah. jumping up and down to the beat. That's what the players demand. Um, so that's why the Def Jam series is no more to this day. This, of this game. This game looks like Doctor Strange is part of it, and he's just putting people in the mirrored universe. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. This is definitely an idea, right? Like, that, they had an idea. There's something with, there. There's something yeah. there. And I, I kind of, I think, I think that there is a good idea to be had here. But once again, the actual execution of it, like, every single attack I see these guys throwing, it looks like we're at YouTube videos at 0.25%. You know, like every <laughs> everything is doesn't have speed or impact to it. It looks like we we did not animate the motion capture. We just took it fucking raw, bro, and stuck it in I there. Was, I was gonna say it's just the motion capture dots hitting each other. Yeah, like on the on the mocap suits. Like that's that's how the game's impact is. But there is this game has a cinematic story mode, like Def Jam Fight for New York, where there's cutscenes and stuff and. I don't know how elaborate it is. I don't think you like level up, but I've been meaning to go through it just just to see, like, because I've never played the arc, the cinematic story mode. Yeah, I just played a couple rounds and be like, oh, 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 oh I'm <laughs> fucking done. I'm not. I'm good. Uh, but yeah, it's it's such a shame. It's like this is also a trash game, but it's also disappointing because the other Def Jam games were just getting better and better. And you just think for the third one with a bigger budget and stuff. And it's just, it's just not what you wanted. If this was its own standalone thing, like this is how Def Jam started. I'd be like, eh, it's fine. It's whatever. But because it's the third in a series, it was just like devastating to a lot of people. A lot of people fell into some depression after I, Def Jam Icon. Yeah, I, I think we were talking earlier about a game on here that I might have had no memory of it existing. And I don't think it was that one. I think it was Fighter Within on Connect. And I definitely yes. have some memories of this one because I played this game like two or three times on stream. And every single time we play it, Steve ends up kicking me in the nuts somehow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Fighter Within is a connect fighting game where you just slap the shit out of midair and battle each other and it is somewhat responsive I guess to the point of which connect games could be in the early Xbox One era um, yeah. but oh my god yeah I, I can't I don't think I've actually ever taken more physical damage to anything we've ever played than this game or emotional yeah, or emotional. <laughs> I, I would argue the physical damage conquers the emotional. This Fair is enough. like this is like DOA but connect version. Yeah, for yeah. It does it does well, have that feel he, too. But but remember, Maximilian, this is the sequel. My God. I just saw <laughs> Why what did you just no, say? No, so the, the, the video that you link, right? It's like Max's video. And if you go to two minutes and 50, 53 seconds, <laughs> you literally see Max do a jump heavy kick, bro, in real life. <laughs> Wait, I want to like, see it. He literally does a 55. jump. Yeah, two, yeah, he literally does a jump I heavy kick, bro. <laughs> it, 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 so it, it happened in game. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Fighters Uncaged was the first game. They're both published by Ubisoft. And it was even more generic it was like behind the back perspective yeah and it was max all the jobbers that you fight in def jam fight for new york not yeah. the like the big name rappers and like celebrities it's like that game is just filled with those guys yeah and i guess it sold well enough that ubisoft tried again on the xbox one with fighters within and it's just like i can't think of a better example not to continue something than these games Anything that's that's motion controlled. There's one or two kind of like, eh, I'll, I'll let it slide. But this, um, Fighters Uncaged on Xbox 360. Then the other one is the PS3 version of this 
that uses the uh, move. Remember the move? Of course you don't. Um, that was fight the oh no the fight lights out with Danny Trejo as your host. Um, this game is essentially black and white with red because blood. And it's the most desaturated, most edgy, like, oh, it's so grimy. Oh, punching so hard. I played this once and it was like, it was like a farce. Like it just as bad as, as the, the connect games. It just, why did you, uh, I guess because of the, the move controllers are like two punching things. Like I can punch with this. I can punch with that. They just thought like, oh, the people punch with two fists in real life. So that works for a fighting game, didn't it? No, and, and sadly no. doesn't. So, oh <laughs> no, just anything that the other the other fighting game that I kind of was considering putting here, but I I do like it. But do you remember on the Wii there was going to be a a violent fighting game that was about gladiators? It was called Gladiator AD, and it had fatalities, and uh, it was like very um, three hundred inspired. It was like all dusty and and again low saturation. It was pu- being going to be published by Sega. Then the game mysteriously just disappeared. Then it mysteriously reappeared with a complete makeover, a teen rating, and it was called Tournament of Legends. And it was just taking sphinxes and cat people and uh, one Roman gladiator, like everything from myth. Mm-hmm. And it turned it into like a punch out a 3d punch out game where one character was in the foreground and one was kind of in the background. And if you gain the advantage, the perspective shifts so that the camera is now behind your back in a, in a sort of neat perspective. And I kind of like it. I like the idea of it, but at the end of the day, it just plays so clunkily because it uses the Wii remote. Um, and I've always wanted to do a, a big video about this and talk to someone behind the development. Cause that was Sega being like, let's have a bloody, gross grimy gladiator like gritty game and then after a year let's release it for a teen audience let's drop that price to 1999 and uh yeah just just forget about it back then i feel like like, what that game just got announced again like at evo there there was there was a (laughs) there was a trailer for a game at evo that was weirdly similar to that that looked relatively high budget, but it was like gods fighting each other or something like that. That was like Anubis or, it, but it wasn't Fight of Gods. That's an old game. I was about to say there was a trailer yeah. that just popped that in nowhere, and I I don't remember what the name for it was, and everyone else will tell me. But it was very, it was like thirty seconds, and it's like what is this? And then it had a name, and then that was it. And it was like who's oh, making it? Oh, uh, was that like Umbral? Umbral. Oh, yeah. The gothic, I, I, like you, gothic. Like, you, yeah, you like you didn't really see gameplay. You just saw like just kind of no. like a, a trailer. No, then, then that's another thing. No, not, Umbral... not not Umbral Core. That's that's okay. a, that's like the Bloodborne looky like dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. yeah. Okay. yeah damn. Anyone else remembers this shit happening? It was it was this <laughs> is this game that looked very like like possibly made in like Korea or China. It had that sort of visual style to it, and it it kind of was like gods like deities sort of like fighting each other, but not fight of gods, which is also another Chinese made uh, fighting game. And I'm trying to remember what the hell it was. It had it characters fought each other in it. It looked it could have been 3D fighter ish oh man oh um, man i'm looking for this too fight god of gods. fighter god fighter thank you shut god up fighter it's god really called god fighters fighter. trailer not fight of gods god fighter there i, oh, but I, I like evo posted this one yeah god fighter i like that because it's like it's very simple and to the point guess who i fight yeah. It's gods. Yeah. It's gods, so, and that's so, why I like so fight, of no fight, fight, yeah. of, fight of gods. Fight of fight of gods ends up being one of my like cheesiest. Like I feel I feel like games like fight of gods aren't actually bad. I feel like those are absolute guilty pleasure kind of games because that's like they are. Jesus versus Santa, and Jesus has dope Rekka combos that carry full screen for hundred percent damage. Like this is amazing. Yeah, the, the stuff like fight of gods, uh, the uh, pet meme game that the the same dev made, where you're all pets fight like, of animals. Memes. Fight of animals, like all that shit's good shit. Uh, uh, crab fight is also all yeah. that stuff. It's like those aren't bad fighting games. Those are cheap indie fighting games, but there's passion behind them. There's someone that's like, 
I'm gonna look at the, get this idea and I'm gonna execute the fuck out of yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. Did, did you did you know they made a third one? I what? played recently. It's like a robot it's one, called, right? Yeah, it's called Fight of Steel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, so they just made that the same people that made Fight of Gods and Fight of Animals. They made Fight of Steel as well. So I have to bring up. Uh, someone was looking at it earlier. MK Advance is oh, in, no. is interesting just because we can talk about like the worst port of a well-known fighting franchise and it's like mk advance is straight up not finished like it's not they were required to put it out the door for the holiday season because midway back then and it's just incomplete because no one that worked on this said that's good ship it they were it like oh terrible. fuck i guess we gotta ship it because everything about that is broken on a fundamental level the only thing i can say about it has crystal clear voice samples because they used a um a specific uh audio like algorithm to shrink down stuff so it can fit on the gpa but sound crystal clear that's the only thing i'll give mk advance but even then mk advance in general they like there's no like you said there's no balance it was just so busted that everything like if you wanted just to beat the game and cheese it out just jump you just kick. do no you just do special move after special move and it's a block block infinite you literally they just computer will just sit there and just and they can't move so oh, they just block everything oh good yeah the, so, so it's pretty bad there's actually questions like makes me question like games like tech and advance and stuff which got weird gba ports of games that shouldn't be on gba you know yeah i wonder i think but i remember tech and advance also being kind of good so yeah tech tech and advance is super impressive yeah there there's some like game boy advance games that did do extremely well like tech and advance even like uh, super street Fighter 2 turbo uh but just mortal Kombat, like i don't know like maybe because it's like it's a different type of style of fighting game but it just didn't work well whatsoever it was ported by a company that had like very little fighting game like zero uh, sorry when i say very little i mean zero uh fighting game like you know uh, uh experience. experience and they were just tasked by midway it's like just get this out of the door for holiday on the game boy advance because the game boy advance like launched in the summer of 2001 so like we need to have something ready for christmas um because all my research and stuff midway was historically like gotta have it out before christmas 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 jesus loves video games um <laughs> so yeah mk advance is like i was shocked when I told Ketchup, hey, do you want to like team up on a video? He's like, sure. I was like, have you ever played Mortal Kombat Advance? And I'm ready for him to be like, oh, God, I hate that. He's like, no, I had never actually played it. And he was shocked. He's like, I'm playing it. I found several infinites within the first few seconds. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's I, I think it's probably one of on a major system like a like a mainstream system like the GPA super nintendo playstation it is the worst version of a fighting of a well-known fighting game to me Yikes. yeah yeah um, i think so too i'm sure like on the commodore or some fucking british piece of shit like <laughs> computer or whatever uh the 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 what is it called the spectrum i'm sure there's something worse but like in mainstream hardware i think mk advance tops tops them all yeah no this this, this one this yeah i would say mk advance in general is just it's just a struggle it's literally like like if you bought this game like i i hope you i hope you got refunds that's what it comes down to yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of people did <laughs> that one's truly bad i feel like if we had another one on this list that we all could probably agree and talk about it's it's capcom fighting jam but capcom fighting jam isn't like as bad as an mk advance or something like that no. it's just aggressively mid like aggressively like a five or six out of ten when the games from the genre and that developer at the time were all super good you know they, they were essentially pumping out banger after banger it was like marvel 2 third strike and cvs 2 holy shit and then their next game that everyone was waiting for was like nothing interesting so it was and it's it's the one that you rest your laurels on of this is the Capcom versus Capcom and this is what you yeah. got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that the saddest part about it is that story that we've told time and time again, like tale as old as time. Why didn't Capcom ever make a Capcom All-Stars game? Because it feels like that would make the most sense. And it's because a lot of the people that were in charge of like Capcom fighting game development post Street Fighter 4 uh, made that game. 
And they were like, we did that. We, we did that back in the mid 2000s. It was called Capcom Fighting Gem and nobody bought it. But but no one uh. can, th but it's like, yeah, back then 2D fighting games at, at the time were kind of on the outs. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of things was changing no, to Matthew, 3D. We did that. It didn't work. Okay. You know what? You convinced me, Capcom. You're right. It was a bad idea. That was the dark ages of Capcom, man. Like where they just completely said, "All right, there's no more fighting games for a long, long time." Yeah, cancel yeah. that fighting All Stars game. That was going to be in arcades, and uh, put out this piece of shit asset dump that has like I don't think any new sprites in it at all, except maybe Ingrid. Yeah, Ingrid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ingrid. It, yeah, I think Ingrid mainly. It was, Ingrid, right? it was supposed to have more. I think we might have talked about this in a previous episode, but there was supposed to be a Street Fighter 1 team that was going to use Eagle's sprite from CVS 2. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. It was going to get a new re uh, new sprite for Retsu from Street Fighter 1, and it was supposed to get an a old, but at the same time, young Sagat, pre-Scar Sagat. Yeah. And they were going to like t either take Sagat's uh, Street Fighter 1 sprite and like... um uh spruce it up or spruce it down and they're gonna have that but the, like literally time constraints let's not do that and i'm like that would have been that at least would have been interesting like capcom fighting jam would look, look looked upon far more fondly if it actually came out with a street fighter one team because you're like look a new sprite that's not ingrid yeah exactly you know? yeah, yeah. It did, did 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 when uh when they announced the red earth characters uh did they get like kind of new sprites because i know like in Red Earth, you don't really get to play the boss characters, right? They did. They they got the same sprite, but you were able to control the bosses like uh, Hauser yeah. and uh, Hydron. Uh, um, okay. So for like Calamari Face and uh, and and Bird Dinosaur. So that was the first time I think they were controllable. And Leo, of course, yeah. he's always controllable. So yeah, he, yeah. But in general, like this game was pretty bad. But it's so hard for me to crap on it because. This one got this game oh, yeah. got me a. This is the one. A, a, I yeah, forgot. This, this game got me a free ticket to go to Japan in 2005. So, yeah, you know, I, I can't, I can't talk bad about this game. I think it's funny this you whole, can. this whole conversation <laughs> of like why these things were happening around these eras, which was essentially that the genre was a cash grab for a lot of companies to just jump in mm. and sort of establish themselves and try to like bank on the the uh, the notoriety that Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and other franchises like Virtua Fighter and Tekken were trying to do. And nowadays that doesn't really exist much anymore. Nowadays, I feel like it's almost impossible that a fighting game gets released and it's like truly awful, like awful, like pit fighter awful, you know? Yeah. Mm, I, I, I yeah. have one. I have one. I have it in the, in the list. Recently? Uh, That's recent? Re re recently. Um, it's called Fight. And it got released on the Switch like a year or two ago. And I think it's just a port of a Steam fighting game that's really bad. Please tell me it's this... spelled incorrectly. No. F-I-T-E. No, 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 it's not. It's, it's, it's spelled correctly, unfortunately. It. Bro, this looks this it. looks kind of kind of bad. Like, <laughs> so the thing with this is that it's all the exact same character. It there's like twelve characters, but there's no differences in the moves. This is just someone quickly shitted this out onto the Switch eShop and Steam because it's not hard. And there's something weird about all the modes in that they're identical. If you take yeah. the arcade mode, you fight one character, then it boots you back out to like the main menu and then if you take versus mode it's the same thing like on a functional level no one knew what they were doing you can like if you zoom the you pull the both characters out like just walk backwards the camera just like go gets so far that you can see the boundaries of the stage like the unprogrammed area and every character is just this they're, they're yeah it looks like it's running on like base unreal engine assets I, I assume that that it would, uh, it should have been called base unreal asset fight. Yeah, that's what I should have called. <laughs> it's I I had not yet tackled this on my show because I think this might be the worst, and I have to save it. I gotta keep people waiting, uh, so Bro, it, it might wow. be the worst. This is truly this it, is pretty bad. How could it be the worst when you have a character named Rhino and he looks like a, a walking rhino? rhino. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a bear wearing like a like a Ryu and Ken's yeah. like gi. And like the bear's name is fucking Kobe. <laughs> yeah, Kobe. 
and then they have like the leech and he has like literally like literally le- leeches on his body i mean there's a lot of characters though but there is yeah. but they, there's no special moves yeah, there's no, no special there's, moves. there's no move list there's there's nothing there's no content Fig- here f- figure it out i i think that's the reason why i've hesitated because i'm like there's no content here there's nothing i can really talk about per se and all the stages look like you know bad warcraft or like early blizzard like 3d games or Uh or something like it it, on steam it actually has a different name i forget slash don't care what it's called but it's it it might be the worst i i i i'm hesitant to say that but it's it's a weird thing because if you have no content no mechanics no special moves yeah. How am I even supposed to judge it? It's a screensaver, essentially. Yeah. Like that Fight Club game, you know, it's just boring. The Damn. Fight Club game at least has some stuff. Like there's a story mode, there's unlockable characters. This is this is like less than that. This is yeah. I, the least. Yeah, you, you know, you know, it's bad when when I when I go to Game Facts and they have fight, but there's nobody that made uh, an FAQ on it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make an FAQ. Nobody made an FAQ on this. Hoping there was going to be some shining, gleaming hope at the end of this game, where it's like somehow, and this and this cheese ball ass Switch game somehow features the greatest matchmaking and netcode of any fighting game ever. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, the the best part. The best part of it, I'm I'm going to Q and A. Nothing media, nothing news, nothing. And I go to the board, the forums, and some guy says this game is about 25 percent complete. Avoid at all cost. (laughs) Nice. Hey, he knows what's up. Um, I want to ask Max about in a, in the disappointing pile, not like necessarily a terrible game, but uh, every so often there's a legacy going on. Max will pop in uh, X Men Mutant Academy one or two, and he's like, "This isn't as good as Capcom uh, Marvel games." And he plays it, and he's like, "This game's kind of sick." <laughs> yep, yep. That oh, it always happens, and this is like the PS two one, two. right, by the same devs yes okay and it's so disappointing it just it like looks awful yeah and it's like a 2004 game and it's just weird yeah and this is when they went like th- like the the ps2 3d era ish where they have like sidestepping mm. and shit and then the gameplay just turns to kind of crap as a result of it because there's very few games that were able to actually be these like big 3d spectacle titles around this time frame yeah. that were good and it was kind of like dead or alive tekken and virtual fighter and soul Calibur to an extent and all these other ones like had their attempts and they just don't feel right i i will give a credit you mentioned dead or alive and it does have dead or alive styles um like stage transitions where people crash into things and they wind up on a new like part of the level and stuff and those are kind of fun to look at they're but the it's just the exact same game as the PlayStation games, just not as good. And on the PS2, you expect like it's gonna look like this and it's gonna have this. Ooh. I think the arcade mode does have like a couple of cutscenes, like it's a little bit of a cinematic arcade mode. But other than yeah. that, it's just I remember renting this being like, Oh man, really? I was really looking forward to this. Like next dimension, you're just kind of amped up, you know? Yeah. Bro, I, this game looks so funny to play because I'm looking at Sentinel Scott right Storm. now. Yeah, Scott got, Storm. I mean, that's my boo. But <laughs> I'm looking at Sentinel right now, but they they made him a grappler in this game. And yeah. that's just the that's most perfect. Hel- that's just the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life. He just looks like he looks like Abigail. That's that's cool. I mean, to be fair, like Sentinel's proportions are kind of Abigailish, so I'm kind of down with that. But when was the last time you ever played this, Max? I This one, I feel like we might have played it at some point. I feel like Kenny and Steve uh, played like Sabretooth or something, and they showed off some dank thing trying to get me to pay <laughs> attention, and I was just like so uninterested. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I feel... I feel like the PlayStation games are probably better. Mutant Academy and Mutant Academy 2. Just because they don't have the the crazy 3D element, they remain relative mm-hmm. like 2.5D fighting games, you know? And I think that helps those games feel a little bit better and have like some fun dankness to them. But yeah, I don't know. Like th- this is one, one step below that, that, that other God, what, what is the other X-Men one where it's like Wolverine b- brutally murders Spider-Man on the PS2. What? 
Like what? there, there's. Wait, what? I, I played it not that long ago. It's like ne Marvel Nemesis or something like oh, that. Oh, Marvel Wait, Nemesis. Yeah. Nemesis. Is, was that a fighting game or, the, or was that like kind of like it's, a? It's a, a Power Stone. Game. A it's power a Power Stone. stone okay. Like yeah. I, I don't remember if it had four player capability, but it played like Power Stone, where you're like stuck in an arena, you can Rise, like throw things. And Rise stuff. of the Imperfects. Yeah. Oh yeah. my! I, I there was so much like praise about that game too like so oh, many people are so hype about that game a lot and a lot of people still to this day it's like oh i played it when i was like 12 and i loved it and i'm like yeah no i get you but you, you play it nowadays and it's it's, <laughs> yeah, it's no, i, I don't get, get you, you man, as much but, uh, i get you i had those games too so what is this what, what is beast wars trans meadow like i remember watching beast wars transformers as a kid but this game looks like it I, I don't want to watch the show ever again. Type oh, of thing. Jesus. This is a PS1 like, game. Yeah. Oh, no. An yeah. N64 game. Uh, <laughs> this it looks was, so bad, bro. It was PS1 and N64. I think I mentioned this in a previous episode very briefly, but this is just like one of, yeah, it's, it's the upper echelon or lower echelon of like the worst shit. It's just like you have two buttons, like attack and projectile, and you can transform and you're slightly faster. And it's the most basic bitch. Like, here's an action game for kids, quickly. Just and even on the N64 and PlayStation, like it looks horrible for the time. Like, yeah, I think this, this was is, like 97, 98, something this like is, that. This is probably when the TV show was kicking. Like TV shows, because I remember watching this for on TV, and I'm like, the show was really good. Like a lot of people liked it. We talked about it in school all the time. But I actually have never seen this game until now, and this just looks. This it, looks like it looks like man, visual looks barf, you know. Yeah, it, it it looks like this is this is like like it's it feels like t a type of Pokemon, but this is before <laughs> Pokemon became a great game. Like that's what it just reminds me. It of. feels like Pokemon. <laughs> like it just looks like it. Like with it's, transforming, and then like it looks like you right. like go into like different type of like fields or something after like hitting a super. This mix. this was this was a rental exclusive i don't think you could oh, oh, you, you can't buy it you could legally buy it because of they didn't want to be uh they didn't want to get sued by people who bought it hmm. huh, i think that's interesting. this makes me also I, realize how disappointing it is that there is no like transformers fighting game like in any way and there's like I, oh you know i'm thinking about it like i nothing that really stands out to yeah me. like nothing I, where you can I play like star scream versus megatron or some shit I think there might be like a fan game. I remember seeing like a Mugen fan game of like a Transformers fighting game, perhaps. But yeah, you're right. It is like I can't even think of a versus mode in the the Transformers games that, or like you know, a combat of. I know there was like multiplayer, like deathmatch, in like the uh, PS3 and 360 games. But like, there's not even like a versus thing where you can just walk around an arena and like bash a second player. I don't think. Yeah, that's yeah. disappointing. You're right. Like we like we have so many Gundam fighting games, but like there's no Transformers mm. is like super there's, surprising. Huh? There's two Power Ranger fighting games. Oh, three Power Ranger fighting Multiple games Power for Rangers. fuck's sake. Yeah. Yeah. So eh. the trans metals. I remember that was like the new like not relaunch, but that was like their after a couple of seasons, they're like, oh, it's the trans metals. They got these new forms and they're they're slicker and they're cooler and edgier and blah blah blah. And I remember seeing this at a rental store, like at a blockbuster and being like, oh, okay, cool. And not cool when I, when I play it, like, again, it might be, it might be the top there of, of the worst. And I haven't played it since I was a kid, but memories are bad. Memories are very bad. I, so uh, I, yeah. I get a lot of people that ask me about this game so often, and I feel like I've maybe played it like once or twice and I just have no desire to ever check it out again. And it's Balls, balls. Which one? The balls. Oh, balls. 3D. Balls. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't even. Can we even say anything? It's balls, man. And it's a. They they fight each other. As so balls. <laughs> when you when you play it, it's bad, and there's not much to say. But if you look at the instruction manual, it actually has like a shitload of mechanics. But, but it doesn't really matter because the, the feedback of hitting things and the hurt and hitboxes are like, it, it, it doesn't feel like anything. It just, you have no idea what you're playing. But I looked down a list of all the shit you can do. Like there's, you can clone yourself to become every other character in the game. Like every character is Shang Tsung. Oh, wow. Every character oh. can turn into another character and some shit. There's fatalities. There's like a wake up game. There's all this crap, but it's like, I, I'm playing balls. <laughs> I don't, 
you know, and there's there's a couple of bosses too that are unlockable. And when you actually see the Japanese box art of this game, you see what the characters are actually supposed to be. Like you see them rendered realistically and not what the spheres can do. So it actually looks like a cool lineup of characters. I'm not even joking. Surprisingly, it, it looks really fast when like looking at like the footage and everything. Especially the uh, Genesis version. It's quite a bit uh, faster than the Super Nintendo version. The Super Nintendo version looks a little better. Genesis runs a bit better. So uh. I'll give it that. Um, ball, Ball's Japanese box art. I, I'm telling you, I was like, what? That's what they look like? I made a tweet about this like months and months ago. And just like, hey, look at what these characters look like. And everyone's like, what? They look awesome. Bro, I'm watching your video. <laughs> and then, bro, you know how these game magazines and everything. So they gave it like a 90% pro score. Why? <laughs> it's for, for, for balls. What? <laughs> like 90%? Like, <laughs> what? Oh, they were giving oh. high numbers. This is when 3D <laughs> had these like, uh, uh, 3D was like cupcakes flying into your mouth. Oh, where it's like, oh, it's got man. 3D. It's incredible. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll I'll show you guys the the picture I'm talking about, Maxim. In case you missed this, oh Jesus, that that got fucked up. I was trying to put something in chat, it's like super messed up. Uh, yeah, check check. Uh, I hope hopefully that works. Yeah. Oh well, that's who the characters actually are. Yeah, it's like a rhino man, a clown, a gymnast, a caveman, a superhero, a gorilla, a sumo wrestler, and like a big another Abigail guy. Yeah. yeah. How weird. I have never I never knew that Balls 3D was supposed to actually represent, you know, characters that weren't just made of spheres. But yeah. that, that's the that's the weirdest revelation from this whole thing that I've ever seen. Big revelations. Um, I thought you were gonna cause someone was highlighting it. I thought you were gonna say like a lot of people talk to you about TMNT Smash Up. I don't know what that is. Which so that's oh, a it's, that, it's bad. It, okay. It's not great. It's a TMNT um, uh, platform fighter that was actually made by Sora Limited. So people what? that worked on Smash worked on this and was published by Ubisoft. And it's like, oh, a TMNT platform fighter? Yeah, why not? And you play it and it's just, it's so after, it's so trying to model itself after Smash Brothers Brawl specifically. Yep. Because it was a Wii game. It was also on the PS2. But it was a Wii game and it was like the same type of items, the same type of announcer and type of like UI. And that type of UI that's unique and fine to Smash. But you put it on something like TMNT that has a lot of attitude and like its own shit. And it just comes across as weird and sterile and kind of... You- it's, it's a very yeah. strange game. You even have similar s- Smash stages. Yeah. Um, as part of the game, like they have like kind of like a Final Destination type of vibe going on as well too. Um, that blows and, my mind that Sora Limited yeah. are the one that put this together. That's so because they don't they did very few games around that time frame, and like Smash was obviously like the big one. And to think that yeah. they're they just like slapped this together that is super weird to me. Yeah, it just looks so it just looks funny and bad at the same time. And, and something that really throws me off is that since it was released in like the latish 2000, 2008, 2009, it uses the CG Ninja Turtles movie that was just called TMNT. It uses those character designs. So it's like, OK, you're still having that because that's what Ubisoft had the rights to. They made the official movie adaptations of that, like for that game. But then they still had the license, but they couldn't just do whatever they wanted. So they just used the same sort of models. But in the cutscenes, they're all the black and white gritty Ninja Turtles comics yeah. from the 80s. So it's this huge disparity between the in-game graphics and the cutscenes for the for the story mode. And I'm like, what the fuck? Just pick one. Stick with it. If this had been like a straightforward, this is our universe of TMNT or we're doing like a specific thing. Uh, of the movie or the comics fine but they have like all this different stuff rabbits from rayman are in this game because why the fuck not i think one <laughs> of them is dressed as naruto justin wait really I yeah mean, I, would, I, I would play this game i think it's yeah. kind uh, of an issue go. when you have a teenage mutant ninja turtle game and the turtles look like frogs yeah <laughs> they look like they weird do. frogs in game like the game isn't terrible or anything when you play it like everyone you know plays like smash essentially it's just it's just not so it's like what Max said, it's kind of very mid, but 
the idea behind this is like, yeah, that's great. Why would I not want to try a TMNT uh, platform fighter? But then it's just, it, that's why I have it in the disappointing thing. Cause I was looking forward to this. I remember back in IGN uh, during the Wii days, they're like, Oh, smash brothers TMNT game. Oh, that's going to be sick. And then they're like five out of 10. Oh God. They, they have a cool, they have, they have a cool stage interaction though. I was like looking through it. And like so, you're 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 playing on a ship. You're fighting on a ship, and the ship sinks like the Titanic. Iceberg hits it. Yeah. And you have to jump on the whale, and and a, and swimming between the whales are sharks. And if you don't make the jump, the shark actually jumps and bites you, and you actually lose because of that, which is actually pretty neat. That's so. So you see, there's charm. Th there's charm in the stages for sure. It's just. The game doesn't have like much oh. new ideas. Oh, he loves it. What's up, bro? I just saw Splinter get eaten by a giant crocodile. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And it's, Take and that, it you wasn't, rat. It wasn't Leatherhead. Oh yeah, it was a. It was a. It was literally a like Discovery Channel alligator, bro. Um, is there like a last game we want to wrap up with? Anyone wants to give shoutouts or wants to know like what's the deal with this one? Because there's like a few left we haven't talked I'm about. I'm curious on why do you think SBC Chaos is disappointing? Sorry, I don't understand the question. You know, because I feel like <laughs> it's it's definitely not like a CVS one or a CVS two, but like therefore you know, it's disappointing. <laughs> hey, there are so many cool secret characters, though. Like there is there. You don't think Violent Ken was cool? There's I no, Violent I didn't say that. There's also like <laughs> SVC Chaos Plus, which is some fan thing, I think, that has like a ton yeah. of characters in it, Dang. which is really crazy. And then Mars Attack People is cool, too. I love the fact that he was a playable uh, character in this game as well, too. Um, Hugo with Bao in his hair is like come on there's so much charm in this game even though this uh, game is very jank it's I like it's 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 fun it's funny too because there's also a ton of mechanics in this game like a lot of crazy yeah. shit you can do it's just that it's all insanely difficult and so like specific that you don't you won't really come across it when you just play it naturally you have to like look shit up yeah, I, I remember playing this game the first time at the arcade. Um, they were installing this game and they're like, yo, SNK made a CVS, right? Everyone was super hype. And, and then you the, play it. Yep. And after the whole, <laughs> after the day was over, a lot of people were definitely disappointed for sure. But yeah, you know, it was so that, it, that's, you know, that's precisely what I mean, yeah. where it's like it, it, it's coming off two of like the, the greatest crossover games ever. And SNK were running out of time. Like they made this on the, the 11th hour and it just doesn't come together. Like I find yeah. a lot of the stages are super boring and just drab to look at. And while the roster is cool and the secret fighters are cool, it's just it's just it's just missing something for me. And I just I just remember a lot of people being disappointed with it i would love snk to like re-release this and and tune some things up or have all the characters unlockable like the uh, uh cvs chaos plus like yeah. if they release re-release that and like I, I don't know what else they could do i would like give that a go but i remember at the time being like crushed with this because i was like yeah exactly snk is is getting their time to shine and it's like uh it just kind of misses the mark yeah. they even have mega man zero he was so cool so does onamusha blade warriors <laughs> didn't save that game mm. <laughs> is there one one more left you want to talk about max no, I don't think so. I think it's just... <laughs> I'm done! I think I'm done. I think I just... I'm just glad that we get, like, goofy fighters, like, you know, Fight of Gods and stuff like that, like this new god fight, you know? I'm, I'm glad that there's effort to for fighting games to exist, like Crab Fight, that are just weird, awkward spins of what is the usual norm of people trying some new crazy stuff, and I, I actually do appreciate that. I like some so bad it's good fighting games, you know? Yeah, it, it, it is kind of crazy that, like, we grew up in an era where there were just so many bad fighting games and people were just like companies were like yeah we gotta ship it out now it's just like there's so much more things you could do to prevent that because obviously there's patches and like updates that people can do to make their game better so you guys you kids over there out there you guys have it good now <laughs> we do uh the, the last one i wanted to give a shout out to is fight for life on the jaguar oh, now, Jesus. Either of you either of you had the pleasure of controlling a fighting game with the Jaguar pad? Uh, not yet. I have to hook up my Jaguar 
to and actually play this. Jack. A Jaguar. So when you when you when you play some Jag, you have to like make you have to make peace with the fact you have to hold uh, the, the, the Jaguar played, controller. I played this piece of shit uh, a long time I have, ago. I have never seen this game. This is really this is again another upper lower slash echelon game where it's like this the Jaguar could barely do 3D. Um, and when it did, it looked like this. It ran like this, which is like dog shit. And it's just a bad virtual fighter ripoff. And it was actually <laughs> made by, I believe, High Voltage Software, who would go on to make a number of games on the Wii and stuff and do some HD ports. And re remember when I mentioned um, uh, Tournament of Legends on the Wii, the Gladiator game? Yeah. And they went on to make those as well. But this is like one of their earliest games. And it's like one of the roughest where. Um, I've tried emulating it because the copy, the hard copy I have for my Jag just doesn't boot. Thank you. Did so you, I tried. Did, did, did you, you know, do the, the blow tech? Dude, I did the, I did the cleaner on the Q-tip and like clean the connection <laughs> on the fucking, on the, on the cart cartridge. And it just, it just wouldn't work. It I still used to be, oh my God. Yeah. I got, I got a Jaguar, uh, cart so that you can just drop all the games onto uh like all the roms onto this so i have we're gonna have a jaguar night at some point we've been talking Please about do. it for years <laughs> and i've been i've been purposely delaying it for years because there's a couple of fighters a couple of exclusive fighters on the jaguar fight for life being one of them another one is ultra vortex and they're all bad they're all like even the the 64-bit jaguar version of double dragon 5 the fighting game double dragon 5 is like worse because they tried to do some weird thing with the graphics but Fight for life is like, I'm coming for you, fight for life. I'm going to review you, and I don't <laughs> no. care how long it takes. You're hiding from me. I'm coming for you, fight for life. <laughs> we are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys. So I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah.